One of the most famous Spanish chefs in Australia would have to be this guy right here, Frank Camora. Your food is stunning. I love your restaurant, Mavita, and I remember having this dish there. It's a cold, chilled tomato soup, and when these little babies are in season, there's nothing I like more. How do you say it? I can't say the name. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's called Salmorejo Cordobes, which is um, from a town called Cordoba, which is where my family's from. So this is, you know, one of the dishes I really grew up with over um, many, many years. Fabulous. Well, how do we start this one? Okay, so the tomatoes mm -hmm. and the bread, we're going to get those ready. Mm -hmm. So if I could get you, Justine, just to cut the bread crust off, yep. I need about 200, 250 grams of just the central part of it. Meanwhile, I'm going to put these tomatoes in our blender. Mm -hmm. So you really do need um, tomatoes that yep. are beautifully ripe. Yep. Don't even attempt this soup with, with really hard, you know, horrible tomatoes. It has to be yep. amazing quality That's tomatoes. what I love about Spanish food. You don't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be, you know, extensive and lots of ingredients. Mm. Good quality, really good quality, simple ingredients can make something quite magical. You know, the thing about food is often the simpler, the better, mm -hmm. I reckon. I mean, especially when you're cooking at home. So, you know, this sort of dish is perfect for home cooking. So how am I breaking this Bread, I should have asked you. Is it just uh, big um, pieces? Yeah, small? just with your hands into sort of golf ball shaped pieces. It doesn't matter too much, yep. actually. All right, well, I'll keep doing this and we just give that a blend. I'm going to give this a really, really good blend. All right. And that's pretty good mm -hmm. now. So we're nice and smooth. I mean, all the seeds and all the skin and the core is still there, so we need to strain it. Okay. So this makes life a lot easier than peeling each tomato yeah, individually. Um, you can see how beautiful and rich that tomato oh, juice is, really. Oh, so it, it is a beautiful smell. Okay, so just strain that through a nice big strainer into our bread. So I've got all that bread in that bowl now. So silky. Mm. Oh, it smells good. Okay, so um, I think it's time to get our hands dirty. So yeah. really just get in there and squish. Do you want me to do it? I'll get, do it. I'd love it. to, get yeah. In there. Oh, that's <laughs> good. So just squishing it with the bread yeah, there. Yeah, squish it right up. So the bread's got to be a couple of days old. It needs to be stale, so mm. it really soaks up the flavour. Yeah. How's that looking? Um, it's beautiful. I mean, that's the consistency we want. It's almost like a tomato porridge sort of consistency. That's so exactly the perfect explanation yep. for that. Um, so now we've got to blend that soup again to make it lovely and smooth. There we go. So, I'm obsessed with that colour. It's That's just beautiful. The colour of summer, I think. When I eat this soup, mm. you know, it reminds me that, you know, it, some people it's like when the cricket season starts. Yeah. For me, it's when I start eating this soup, I know it's getting warm because the tomatoes <laughs> are great. Yeah. All right. Click that in. Let's get started. Can um, we get a lid for this? A lid for you. Fantastic. And we're going to need to put a couple more ingredients in there. So, a little bit of salt. Okay, so we're going to pop that salt in there. Mm. Um, some garlic. In this recipe, we're using raw garlic, so you've got to be a little bit careful, you know, how much you use. Mm. I love garlic, but, you know, when it's raw, it really can overpower everything. So I'm just going to put a small amount in there. And, and we're going to put it... So if you want to get that started, yep. I'll add a bit of olive oil as we go. All right. Let's have a look. Ooh. Oh. Beautiful and smooth. Grab a little spoon yeah. and let's taste it for seasoning. Okay. And talk to me about mm. the, the olive oil that we've used. Um, well, I like... For this particular dish, you can't have an oil that's too robust, too, mm. too peppery. Yeah. So you want something like this lovely oil here, which is just a little bit more sort of subtle in flavour, because mm. otherwise the pepperiness will overpower the entire dish. Exactly. Mm. That is just stunning. But now we need to chill it. We do. So mm. we need this... Icy cold. So okay. we're going to pop that into a bowl and put that in our fridge. Oh, it's glossy. Mm. Perfect. And we just chill it until it's really, really cold. Yep, absolutely. Fantastic. Pop I'll take that, that in the fridge. Thank you. I think that soup's got to be chilled by now, so okay, let's that. let's bring it out. Meanwhile, I'm going to grab this beautiful jamón, which is a Spanish ham. Well, aren't you a little bit of a show-off? <laughs> <laughs> Might be a little bit of over-catering, I think. No, oh, look, that. I, isn't that just the most magnificent thing? And it's jamón, isn't it? Yeah, so it's jamón um, in Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people would know a very similar uh, ingredient called prosciutto, of yeah. course. Um, the Spanish version is... 
magnificent, in my opinion. One of the cool. great ingredients of the world. Oh, it is just. Let me have a Look sip of that. that. It smells like a cellar. Mm. It's beautiful and musty and delicious. Yeah, really good. And I love when you go to your restaurant, you can just get it freshly sliced yep. and just eat it just as is. And, you know, the fat's important. It is. The fat is important. But you do need to cut away a little bit of yep. that yellow tinge to it. Yeah, the first layer the there. The first yep. little bit. Yep. I mean, you look at that. Look at that. That's, you know, because the mm. fat melting point is so low. Yep. So you put that on your tongue, it just melts straight away just from the normal body temperature. I love it. Pretty good stuff. Um, for this garnish, though, I'm going to cut them into sort of slightly largish cubes. Mm -hmm. So we get a little bit of texture. And also, we need the similar size of those egg whites. So we're looking yes. for textures here. We're looking for those, you know, Firmness um, and a lot of flavour as well. And so it's fine dice? Pretty fine. Look, similar size to me. It's it's a little fine dice. It doesn't have to be exact. Mm -hmm. Life's a bit too short. You're going to cook this at home. It doesn't have to be totally, you know, the same size. All right, I'll let you plate Let's up. Let's do it. It's a pretty easy dish to plate up. Yep. So we've got that lovely cold soup. Mm. So as I was saying, this is a dish to be eaten when it's warm outside. Yep. You know, and I'm surprised we don't eat more cold soups because it really works with our climate, I think. So. Me, me too. I think you just feel so refreshed after it and full at the same time. Like you're not going away feeling really heavy on a hot, summery day. Exactly. You want something really refreshing like this. So we pop some of this beautiful hamon mm -hmm. on top. So as I said, this is a lot to do with flavour because tomato and Spanish ham or mm. prosciutto work so well together, but it's also that texture and the texture of the egg white. Food's not just about flavour, but it's how it feels in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And always, always a touch of olive oil to finish. <laughs> always, always. And this will, you know, just make oh. it a little bit prettier as well. It looks fantastic. I need to try this. I have to. The biggest spoon I could find. Heaven is that, because that is spectacular. I'm really happy you've shown us how to do this because it's all about simplicity. Mm -hmm. It's all about fresh flavours. Isn't it incredible a simple tomato can be transformed into such an amazing soup? Frank, thank you so much. You're Pleasure. amazing. Thanks. <laughs>